And I guess moving on from tailings, I mean, we've spent, when we kicked off the programme, obviously it was called Cobalt in Mine Tailings. Um, but obviously, as we've kind of looked around Queensland and also, you know, the list of different new economy minerals available uh, and of interest to the government, certainly it's not just tailings that we should be sampling. There's also waste rock, there's slag materials, there's, you know, there's metallurgical waste in the form of spent heat leach. And so our next talk is pre-recorded by Olivia Mayer. So what she's going to be talking about are some new field tools to help identify indium, which is another critical metal of significant interest in Queensland in waste rock material. So um, Rick, if you could please um, share Olivia's presentation, that would be great. Thank you very much, everyone, for giving me your time in this webinar. I'm Olivia Mejias, I'm Chilean geologist, and since April of this year, I started my PhD at BRC SMI. So I'm very excited to give this presentation to you because it really integrates more than specific techniques then I would like to start my talking in terms of waste rock. So in Queensland State, there are at least 3,000 million tons of waste rock related to abandoned mine. And also this number is regarding copper, gold, nickel, and lead zinc sector. Information given by Gavin Ma. So it's a large volume of, of waste rock. And waste rock is not only about acid mine drainage formation and how affect an environmental point of view. It is also about potential for secondary exploration, such as critical metals. So if we combine critical metals and mining waste management, provide an opportunity to environmentally de-risk mine sites and stimulate economic growth in mining communities and grow the resources sector in Queensland State as well. So undoubtedly, recognize and understand what kind of tool can be used for new economy metal fertility testing in the field and what kind of tool have less inconvenient for measuring the critical metals under research due to high demand, for example, cobalt or indium is becoming essential. So today I'm going to talk about LIPS and handlet techniques and specifically a preliminary result according to India, a critical metal. So the outline will be split in four topics. Firstly, I'm going to give some characteristics and advantages of LIPS. Secondly, an overview of Algamo Mansai is the case of the study. Thirdly, the preliminary result using LIPS on real core sample from Valgamo. And finally, next steps. So LIPS is the acronym for laser induced breakdown spectroscopy. I'm going to talk specifically for SIAP app C300 model, which, which is a handlet analyzer. And also this model covers a wavelength between 190 to 950 nanometers. And LIPS is a atomic, is a type of Atomic Optical Emission Spectroscopy, or known as OES. So in terms of a measure element, this specific model covers every element in the periodic table from hydrogen to uranium, and also include light elements such as sodium and lithium. So this is two picture of photos I, I want to show you because it's really um, useful to understand the portable and comfortable is this instrument. This is um, all this mainly a part, but I would like to, to mention laser aperture and a screen is in this part because I'm going to, to show some specific details about them in the next slide. And also this is the transport case, which include the lips unit and another accessories. So how LIPS works? So before to talk about a specific step of LIPS in sample analysis, it is really important to, to mention that the elements emit specific colors of light. This combination of colors are unique signature for each element. So this is really, really important um, because the wavelength of a specific lines reveal the element present on the sample or not. And the intensity of the light at a given wavelength is related to the concentration of each element. 
So even though it's not really quantitative um, instrument, they can recognize elements, a wide um, variety of elements, and also the intensity. So in terms of relative abundance, the instrument can recognize which element um, has more in your sample in comparison to others. So in terms of steps, the first one is the plasma generation. So the high temperature of the laser on the sample or in the surface sample results in ablation of the small volume of material in plasma bloom here. So this plasma contains the samples excited atoms and ions. So the second step with this ex uh, excitation of um, electrons, the second step is light emission. So as the plasma start to cool, and the electron of the excited atoms and ions fall back down to their ground state. And uh, consequently, light of a specific wavelength is emitted from the plasma and collected by the spectrometer. So the final step is light collection. So the spe spectrometer separate or divide all the light emissions with a high resolution optic to be detected by the detector. So this is in a simple way, three step between plasma plume generation, light emission and light connection, light uh, collection by this detector. And in terms of your, how you can capture this uh, information, you can connect the lips with your computer and collect all this um, chemical information from each sample. So here is some picture that how you can use lips with your sample. So just you can take the lips instrument and put um, on your sample. And also you can use some uh, extra accessory, just such as this black one or blue one, and put your sample in a, a stat static uh, way. And also in the um, a screen is a touch, so you can choose your um, your analytical option or your analytical um, application. So the screen here is an example using GeoCam Pro application. This is the area, in a specific area from your sample, survey of sample. And this area has a size three per three millimeters. So in terms of how LIPS works, um, this area represents a one raster grid with 16 per 16 shots. And so that means uh, 256 shots or spectra uh, analyze, are analyzed by LIPS. So the advantages, you can obtain qualitative to semi-quantitative element deportment in mineral phases. For example, here, and as I mentioned, and LIPS recognize this in terms of relative abundance. In green color is the high relative abundance. In the red color is low relative abundance of element, but also can create element mapping. So it's again, it's important to understand this one raster grid and with 256 individual shot spectra and create these heat maps. So Red color represents high intensity of a specific element. So in the case is a heat map of a error. And the blue one represents low intensity of this specific element. So you can create several heat maps from all the elements from the table periodic. And also it is important that for each element, ellipse uh, has a library with several emission lines. So it is really important to recognize what kind of emission line uh, is the best for your interpretation and result. And it depends also in terms of geological and mineralogical context. So another advantage, and maybe could be obvious, is this instrument offering elemental microanalysis in the fieldwork because it's portable, the result uh, are obtained very fast and a couple of minutes. You don't need to prepare your sample in the most of the cases in comparison another analytical tool which use sparks or flames. In that case, you need to prepare your, your sample, but um, laser generates plasma. You don't need 
prepare your sample in the most of the case. As, um, just if you need to use a tailing sample, maybe you need to, to, to require a drying and, and a mounting this sample preparation. But if you want to uh, analyze solid or waste rock on brine samples, just you need to put on your sample this LIPS instrument. And also it's very important, the LIPS detects the concentration of light elements, as already mentioned, such as sodium or lithium, that are normally below the analytic, analytical detection limit of other handlet hand -led instrument, for example, portable XRF. And also the concentration of some critical metals, such as indium, show interference by other techniques, such as LAICP and S. So there is a high potential to use these um, tools in the field work, specifically for waste rock, because you don't prepare specifically for this kind of samples, and also to analyze critical metals such as indium or cobalt and so forth. But also you can have a really good result from an uh, element which um, is a key in terms of crustal abundance. So, really is a high potential to use here in Queensland state. So in terms of Balgamon, this is a historical underground mine. It was mining over 100 years and specifically for 2011-2016 it was included an open pit, but since 2019 this Balgamon mine site was declared abandoned. The location is here, the red point is seven kilometers west of Herberton and 70 kilometers southwest of Cairns in the North Queensland region. And historically mined for tin, copper and silver, it is a polymetallic uh, deposit. And the last owner was Monto Minerals and Bar Barbon people uh, is related with native title interest. So in um, terms of geological setting, this uh, deposit occurs within the Hodgkinson province, which hosts many gold, tung tungsten and, and tin deposit. Here is Palgamon, but this is uh, related to tin, but another such as Heberton, Gif, and Mount Garnet, and within this Hodgkinson formation which is a deep marine sediment and comprised mainly sealstone, mudstone and minor conglomerates. And also Balgamon ore body is hosted in the UNA porphyry, a derivate of the Elizabeth Craig granite. And in terms of mineralization occurring as stockboard veins in racinized regions. Okay. In terms of environmental risks, as I mentioned, Queensland State has over or at least 3,000 million tons. And of course, Balgamon is a, a huge uh, man site and with a lot of uh, or large volume of acid forming waste rock. Here is a picture the, specifically of the waste rock from Balgamon. And here is a man site with the open pit, but also Balgamon is badly recognized for some contamination uses such as acid mine drainage and the leaching of several metals including zinc, copper and cadmium into the Walsh River and Jamie Creek. Here is some picture of, from Jamie Creek contamination. Um, so DNRME have been treating accumulate waste to neutralize acidity and remove dissolved metals and also have clay cap the waste rock down in 2020. Indium um, is a critical metal resource and also current indicated an infrared resources of 2.8 million tons of earth at include 1% of copper, 0.2% of tin, 40 grams per ton of silver, and also 39 grams per ton of indium. Therefore, Balgamon is positioned as one of the world's highest grade Indian resources. Furthermore, in 2018, World Bank declared this list of critical metals or elements or critical elements and a comparison between production in 2017 and the demand in 2050. 
And you can see indium is uh, in the fourth place and it is projected over 240% as a demand of this critical metal. So this is really important try to supply this critical metal, not only from primary resources, also to from secondary resources such as waste rock. And also this uh, picture or mapa, it's uh, showed Australia Indian project. So it's, it's you can see the big was the biggest one is Palgamon and the other one, the smallest one is Dover Castle and Isabel, uh, all of them located in the northern of Queensland. So Balgamon, in terms of waste rock, has a high potential to not only critical metals, as, as I mentioned, such as Indian or maybe cobalt in this region, I mean in the northern of Queensland. But also, this is abandoned mine. It's not a unique abandoned mine. It's a, a lot of uh, inactive mine, an active mine, but also all this region area is located here in an area with high average annual rainfall. So the uh, the option to form in acid man drainage is very high. So the opportunity to 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 study this waste rock in my PhD project is very excited to um, cover from um, characterization point of view, geometallurgical point of view, but also in environmental point of view. So this is the workflow of LIPS, specifically after received the sample from Australia here in Chile. So the first step was important to clean the surface because the aim was this part of the project was to analyze sulfide minerals. And so afterwards was identification um, possible uh, or potential indium very minerals and texture phases related. So here's some picture, sulfate massive and veins as well, and also select a specific area and after that running the lips analysis. So this real course comes from the Balgame on deposit. Here's some uh, uh, real cork as an example and the maximum concentration uh, identified is 1,300 ppm, so a really, really high uh, uh, concentration. And also the from this real core um, sample could be recognized some good relationship between indium, copper, and silver as well, and specifically for massive sulfide style mineralization. So after geological logging of real core sample, 18 real core samples were selected. And after that, a specific 133 areas were selected to uh, analyze with lips. So the Indian berry minerals uh, identified was were chalcoparite, pyrotite, arsenoparite, parite, and cassiterite from a variety of textures such as disseminated paints replacement and infill massive sulfide. So in that case is um diagram of workflow, sorry, a workflow modified from Lowley et al. 2021, because show uh, very useful uh, steps when you collect the information from LIPS and how you can um, transform this information in outcomes. So again, this is the raster with 16 per 16 shot, up, shot that means 256 spectra. So it shot represent um, spectra and raw data as a first step is intensity versus wavelength, but also leaps in terms of high relative abundance element can create in, in own in the in the instrument this step and eliminate the noise between the peak and also this area uh, so it's, it's try to it, uh, it works on the baseline and and transform from intensity uh, to normalize uh, the numbers between zero to one. And of course, uh, recognize this peak with a specific element. So, but sometimes indium not necessarily is recognized as abundant, relative high relative abundance. So, um, it was taken two waves to work with the 
different outcome from LIPS and try to understand and interpret the, the, the semi-quantitative information from real core uh, samples. So the first one from raw uh, intensity data is to recognize which kind of emission line from indium could be useful in terms of geological and mineralogical context. So the firstly, this specific model, C300 SIAPS, uh, in its library um, has six emission lines for India and specifically for 151.1 is a really good uh, emission line for India in that case on this specific deposit. After that, it transform this spectra for each shot. That means this graph has 256 shot of a uh, 56 256 uh, lines, sorry, in this graph. And the idea was to corroborate this peak in 251. This is the emission line for indium. And again, you can see a really good peak and an intensity over 8,000. So the second, um, the next step was, okay, how can I use this information in an easy way to interpret and show in another way? So is create a box plot from this intensity raw data from each mineral or each texture. So even though it's not a quantitative uh, result, it's very useful to compare different um, minerals and try to recognize if some of one, some of them could has high intensity in comparison, high intensity of indium in comparison to other elements. And another way is to work with this normalized data between zero to one and create these heat maps and also LIPS deliver these heat maps, heat maps as well. And this is very useful information to recognize the Indian distribution with it uh, inside of um, Indian bearing minerals and try to recognize it's more in the core or in the, um, or in the age of the minerals. And also, it wasn't included and in this is part of the of the research, but you can use this information, the normalized number, to create correlation and use, for example, Pearson matrix and also a principal component analysis. So here is a specific area of chalcopyrite was a, was a, a create different heat map for indium, copper, zinc, and tin. And in that case, the high peak of indium in this red color is overlapping with this copper, but not for zinc and tin. This is a specific area, but in that case, this indium emission line show a good relationship with copper emission line. So it could be a good relationship between indium and chalcopyrite. So here is a different, uh, another picture that show different minerals such as pyrotite, arsenopyrite, chalcopyrite here, and here the brown one is as cassiterite and arsenopyrite, the white one. So I split all, all the intensity raw data for each mineral, allow to recognize which mineral can host more indium in terms of intensity. So semi-quantitative information, but also very important. So in that case, chalcopyrite is the most endowed in indium, followed by arsenopyrite, pyrotite, pyrite, and cassiterite. And also a similar exercise, but it's for a specific texture. So in the case of chalcopyrite, it was uh, created this box, box plot for replacement. In that case, it's um, phenocrystal, phenocrystal of mafic mineral replaced by uh, chalcopyrite. In that case, it's infant sulfate myocyte of chalcopyrite. In that case, a vein of chalcopyrite. So again, Chalcopyrite that occurs as an infill massive sulfide texture display the highest indium relative intensity. And it's really useful to use a heat map as a complement uh, in that case of a graph, for example, box. So in that case, it's a chalcopyrite vein. So you can see the distribution of indium is more in the core. In that case, it's a pseudomorph replacement between chalcopyrite. It's here in the uh, up. Uh, left uh, side, and this part is arsenopyrite. So you can see the red dot or red shot, it's 
show high intensity in terms of chalcopyrite. And this is a massive texture with interground um, a texture between chalcopyrite and pyrotite, and it is a more a random distribution. So it's really important as a next step, use this kind of tool in waste rock in the field work and recognize these um, Indian berry minerals and different texture as well, but also understand the cycle of Indian in this superficial environment and compare with this more or geology or your um, or geology deposit environment and how this information from a superficial environment and how indium uh, is host in different minerals and and deportment and is a really useful information from a geometallurgical point of view and looking for way to recover indium from this mine waste. And also, of course, include uh, extra analysis as a quantitative such as LAICPMS or microproof uh, to try understand this raw intensity semi-quantitative data in terms of concentration and really quantitative, for example, in PPM of indium in different minerals, such as this is a box, box plot uh, provide for Anita Parvarkar folks. So, this is the last slide. So um, this information present, uh, we can see how useful the LIPS instrument is in terms of being transportable, uh, comfortable, uh, is a fast outcome information that you can obtain without the need to prepare samples. And, and also to don't need immense facilities and a wide variety of elements and also create a element mapping. So it's a really good method for elemental analysis in the field of geological sampling. Specifically, it is a really high potential tool for covering waste rocks and critical metals. So thank you so much for your attention. Thank you very much, Olivia. So it's great to see from both uh, Olivia and Lauren sort of the breadth of research that's been undertaken in Stream 2. Certainly, Olivia is based in Chile and she's looking to, um, once uh, she's permitted to travel, she'll be over here in, um, in Queensland with us, hopefully in January, where we'll actually be putting into practice what she's discovered through her research on drill core materials. So we'll be going out to the northeast and we'll be mapping the uh, the mine waste there in the search for Indian. So stay tuned for results on that. Um, I'm now going to flip to my presentation. Um, I do need to share my screen though, which I will do now. Uh, there we go. 